three, two, one. Is it recording now? It sure is. It's recording me saying, is it recording? Three, two, one, action. Thank you thank you yay well we hope you enjoyed so i was using some setups there and usually i play that song without the music <laughs> and and i haven't played that song in so long this gets a little tricky so i needed it as a guide today that page stay still anyway <clears throat> not the topic of the class but that's a uh, song arrangement uh number one That'll be one of your options that I'll, I'll, uh, I'll raffle off a name. So make sure to put your name <coughs> in the organ you own. And it's important you put the organ because if I send you the setups, I want to make sure to send you the correct uh, format. SU, as I have it in SUA and in the E series. Anyway, so before I get started with the two things I wanted to talk about today, Brenda had a great question that many of you probably know. Uh, but there's a, probably a lot of students who don't know this. So for those who don't know, it's uh, pretty important. She asked, and I'll have to scroll now. Many of you typed, let me go back. How do you select a sound using the number keypad, like entering 114? Okay. So a lot of you have the keypad on the instrument here. Um, well, not a lot of you. If you have a touchscreen model, you all have a keypad, okay? <clears throat> and this number keypad shows up. In the uh, owner's manual, there is a list of sounds, and uh, on the SU series, they're labeled as genius sounds, okay? In the A series, it's also labeled genius sounds. In the E series, it's labeled probably just sounds, okay? Um, so, you know, you have all of what you call your, your quick pick instruments here, all right? That's what they, they refer to these, and some of you actually have a, a quick pick button. But these instruments here are typically the most common sounds that are used on the instrument, your pianos, guitars, and so forth. And the way to put, I don't know what the number is, I want to say 200. I don't know if anybody knows the answer, <clears throat> but a lot of these instruments have 
more than 20 sounds on it. So there's about 200 sounds. And they're listed under the genius button or the sound button on some of the models. And the way I like to refer to those sounds is, or the genius button or the sound button, it's kind of like a wild card in cards. In most card games, if you have a wild card, what can you do with the wild card? I can't hear you. Anything. Anything, you thank it, you. Play it anywhere. <laughs> right, so a wild card, you can make it anything you want that pertains to to that, right? Well, a genius sound is like a wild card of sounds. You can make it any sound you want. Of course, what I mean by that is any sound that is available on that instrument. And there's quite a few on these models. Okay? So, the, what most people do when they want to change or find a sound is they hit their genius button and then they just cleverly sh scroll up. Let me just put it to the just a plain old sound here. Okay, turn off the organ sounds, there's nothing here. So I push the genius button, and in this case it says handbells, and I'll just scroll up brass, brass section, section two, brass, you know, all these sounds. Now you can scroll through them alphabetically, but you know as well as I do, sometimes we just don't have the patience to wait till we get to all those, right? Now, a little, little trick on some of the models, I want to say most of the touchscreen models, if you're on a sound, <clears throat> like right now it says guitar, nylon, jazz, if you touch the screen, it'll actually tell you the number, by the way. Did you know that? Did you know that? Some of you are going like this and you really don't know, but that's okay. You want everybody to make, you want everybody to think you know the answer. That's, that's the best way to do it. But if you didn't know that, if you ever find a sound that you really like, that might be one that you go, huh, I gotta make a notation of that number. So whenever you're scrolling, you could touch the screen. Now, if I touch the screen, it leaves the number there. All right. And if you don't touch it again, it'll remain. Now, if I touch it again, after that, it'll go off. All right. Now, so that's one way. Is scrolling, that's the hard way. If you know what the number is of the sound, if you go to the list, like I know 232, because <laughs> I use that one a lot when I play, and it's a brass section. So I go to the keypad. You type in the number you want, and the next most important thing is, is you hit <coughs> your genius button, and it automatically programs it in there. So let's see what I got. And there's the brass. Um, Brenda, you gave me a number, was it 114, did you say? Okay, so I don't know what 114 is, but I'm going to dial it, hit the genius button, and then we get... Ooh, I like that one. Sounds like a Latin, what is that, a nylon, Spanish guitar, okay. Now, <clears throat> by the way, if you're ever curious to see, now if you notice what I did here, is I pushed the genius button on and off to see the screen. Sometimes once you program it, you don't have to do any of that. You have uh, a, 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 uh, a button here called genius. If you've touched that button, it'll list all of the sounds that's in your geniuses. So you'll know after you programmed it what's in there. Okay? Now, uh, I know this is the S, U, and A, but I'll point out, because I know there's some E people here. E! E series, EX. Uh, on your instrument, uh, you actually have uh, <coughs> a button at the bottom of your big screen that says sounds. Okay, so that's the equivalent, all right? Just <clears throat> used to be called genius, and now they just call them sounds on the E series, all right? So did that answer your question, Brenda? Okay, I see a head nod, and hopefully somebody that doesn't use that will, will start using that. It's really a good tool if you know us. I always have like a handful of sounds that I use a lot, um, and brass happens to be one of those because I do a lot of big band sounds. I want a nice big brass sound right away. Or I finish off with, uh, in some of my Dixieland numbers, I like a brass. New York, New York. Of course, I had presets programmed there. It's just a good way to just very quickly access those sounds. Now, two things I want to talk about today, both involving editing. All right? <clears throat> now, as you may or may not know, um, but whenever you turn on a rhythm, okay, 
and just your simple rhythm preset. You Any rhythm whatsoever. Uh, right above your screen, there is a, uh, it tells you the name of the style. Uh, and then it, you know, has the tempo, the chord, whatever you're transposed at, et cetera, et cetera. Right above it at the top, it says touch here to edit style. Now, it says touch here to edit style. You know what happens with a lot of students? They're afraid to touch it. <laughs> because they're going to ruin it or do something wrong. And I know you've heard this before, but I can't emphasize it enough. What is a button designed for? To be pressed. <laughs> you have buttons on your instruments, and some of them are, you know, we're doing virtual classes. Some of them are virtual buttons. You know, it's not an actual button. Like here, this is a button, this keypad. That right there is a button. Even if it's a function on the instrument, technically it is a button, all right? Anything that's on this instrument is designed to be pressed. You can't hurt the instrument by pressing it because you can always hit your reset button and go back to the default settings. Remember that. So I encourage, push buttons, experiment. You're gonna run into a lot of things that you don't like, but I'm gonna tell you, Every now and then, you're going to run into something that you do like, and you go, whoa, that's nice. And that's where you want to save it on a preset, which is another class, okay? Um, now, so what I'm going to talk about today first is the little edit style. And let me just do this real quick. <clears throat> okay. So right above the screen, there's a little option that says touch here to edit style. Now, Sean, you had an example of this. Um, which one was it? The big band? I think it was the big band. Yeah, it's uh, swing band. Yep. Okay. So gonna, zoom class. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to um, touch. Let me just mute real quick. I'm going to touch swing band rhythm preset zero. This is by default what you get. Okay. And before uh and then i'll go ahead and screen share that sean now take a look at the screen this is what will look like if you touch the screen it says guitar piano sax section yes everything is on there is mine as well all right so that's the way it shows up in in that particular example so here's what it's telling you <clears throat> that when I play this rhythm, everything you're hearing, that is what makes up the instrument. Now, I'm gonna, when I play this, I'm gonna play it a little softer than usual, but. All right. All right. So that's what you see right there, everything you're hearing. Now what I'm going to do, he's got his little pointer going on there. What I'm going to do is turn off the orchestra one, two, three, and four. Wow, look at, he's one of the best rectangular zoom makers ever. Look how pretty that is. So that's, is. yeah, that's how you turn them off is you just touch so Those what buttons. I'm going to do is touch them. Now on the on you won't see it on there because that's that's a copy of an owner's manual, okay? But on my screen right now, what I see is the genie is still there and everything else says off, okay? Now by doing that, what I'm going to do is turn on and off each one just so you could hear it. So here is here is orchestra one two three four off with just the genie okay now you obviously hear the drummer because that's separate and you obviously hear the bass player right <clears throat> now what I'm going to do for the sake of this exercise there's a tab here that says lower all right I'm going to press it and that'll cut off the lower sound all right I'm going to turn off the lower sound. 
So all you hear is the drummer, the bass, and what was in the genie was the guitar and the piano that you saw on the screen there. Hear it? All right, now show a thumbs up or a nod yes. You hear the guitar. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do, <laughs> Sean was doing some heavy metal head banging. He said no. Well, this, is, so I, this, is a, this is a heavy metal band, by the way. You got lots of brass and saxophones and trumpets. and. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is turn off the genie. So now I have none of the band on. All I have is the drummer and the bass. Now I'm going to turn on Orchestra One. Now pull up the screen there, your screen share. And I want... All right, you're gonna have to shut it off and do it again. Oi. All right, so folks, what I have, you see the, you see all the instruments there. I have every one of those buttons off, Genie, Orc, one, two, three, and four. So all you hear is the drummer and the bass. Now, I'm gonna just leave that screen there. I'm gonna tell you what I'm turning on and off and see if you could hear it. Here's the genie again. Hear the guitar player come in. All right, I'm turning the guitar off. Genie off. Now I'm gonna put on the sax section, orchestra one on. Now you notice, you don't hear it all the time. And that's just because of the way the arrangement's made. The saxophone plays occasionally. Let's see what happens when I put on brass section. Here we go. All right, turn that off. Now what I'm going to do is turn on, it says slide trombones. Let's see if we could hear it. So you could probably hear that. Let me turn it off. Okay. Now let's see what happens when I put on mute trum trombones. Well, they must be muted. <laughs> now, if you don't hear the sound, here's what more than likely is happening. A lot of times, what a lot of people don't realize is when they go to the screen, be, surprisingly, sometimes there's a sound here that only happens in the introduction. All right? Now, here's all of the sounds together, and I'll come back to that. So that's everything. Now, the cool thing about this is, is you can actually go into that screen and edit it and make different musicians play in there, okay? And we'll do that example in a moment. Now, I'm going to pick a style here called Swing Train, okay? Now, you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to read it to you and tell you what it says. And I, I encourage you when, you, when you're done with the class, go pull this up and you'll see it. But it says, Genie is going to have the piano and guitar. Orchestra 1 has clarinets. Orchestra 2 has saxophones. Orchestra 3 has brass. And Orchestra 4 has choo-choo. Okay? Now, this is one of those examples that... Um, the choo-choo in this case only happens in the introduction. All right? Listen to the introduction. It's, it's a major part of that, isn't it? There's the other music. All right. Now here's that band. Now what I'm going to do is turn off Genie, Orchestra 1, 2, and 3 and leave just the choo-choo on. Let's see, tell me if you could hear any choo-choo going on. No more choo-choo. So that particular sound <clears throat> is only happening in the introduction. And that's very common on the last one, by the way. Okay, and number four. Or sometimes three. Whatever, whatever that number is. Not every rhythm has five options on here, okay? Now let's turn on and off the others. Just turning it on and off. Here's Genie, piano and guitar. So 
you can hear the the piano in there. Yes, thumbs up. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. Orchestra one says clarinets. Oh, they're there, but you could barely hear them, can you? It's designed just to be that. Here's saxophones, orchestra two. And number three, brass. Okay. So, anyway, point is, is that you can go in, touch the screen, and then choose which sounds you want on and off. All right. But did you know you can actually change those sounds and create your own? Well, let's let's have some fun with that. Um, now, before I go on to it, I'm going to go back to the swing band. The example that Sean had on the screen, so since he has that page, and I'll have him screen share in a moment. And then what we'll do is we'll just randomly pick music instruments and put them in there. Now, before I go on, Inez, you have a question? Yeah, my question was, can't you just turn off Orchestra Plus? But you, I, I yes. see what you're going with that. You just yes. want to do it individually. Yes, yeah, the answer is, you know, I, I was, I was, contemplating do i mention that do i not mention that yes essentially you have a button that says genie and orchestra plus okay on the e series it's basic and orchestra plus okay if you turn off that orchestra plus button it will automatically turn off orchestra one two three and four i understand that that's all it does is it turns it on or off Right. But what this does, it allows you to pinpoint which specific parts of the band you can want to turn off. And we'll have some fun with that here in a second. Thank you. All right. Now, so, Sean, Mr. Sean, <clears throat> Mr. Maloney, pull up that screen. And we'll yeah. use, since he has that page on the owner's manual, leave the screen there. And what we're going to do is I'll ask Sean to type the sound that I'm going to replace next to sax section, brass section, slide trombones. Uh, I'm not going to change the fourth one because I have a feeling in this example, the number four doesn't actually make a sound. So we'll have some fun with this. So um, <clears throat> somebody give me a musical instrument. Either shout it, chat it, unmute yourself. Give me a, any, besides what you see here, think of a music instrument that Violin. you don't hear. Cello. Oh, what what Cello. was it? Violin. Violin. What was the Cello. second? Okay. Cello. Piano? A flute. A flute. Flute. Okay. So we'll start with that. So what I'm going to do is leave that screen there. What I'm going to do is for the slide trombones is I'm going to turn those slide trombones into a violin. Hmm. So help me, God. <laughs> it may actually sound good. I've had actually sounds I put in here and it went, this ain't going to work. And it actually was kind of fun. All right. So instead of slide trombones, here's, here's what you hear now. Actually, it's not terrible. All right. Um, what I'm going to do, I heard someone say flute. So now I'm going to turn off the violins for now. And what I'm going to do is go to the, whoops, back my screen. I think what I'll do is uh, brass section, which normally sounds like this. Okay, okay I'm going to touch brass section and then and uh, scroll up to F or down or up, wherever you want. And I'm going to change that to flutes. I went the wrong way, it took me a little while. Okay, flute, jazz flute, ah, about just a regular, well, we'll put jazz flute. Now this is what it sounds like. Okay, that's just a regular flute, all right? So we got a regular flute. We've got the violin on the three. All right, I'm gonna turn those off. Now for the sax section.
Come on, sack section. There we go. They don't come around too much. I'm going to change the sack section to clarinets. All right. Or maybe I should have changed it to the trumpets. Or maybe I should change it to dogs and cats. All right, so those are some dogs in there. So I changed it to animal dog. He's going to say woof woof, but it's actually labeled animal woof woof. And then for the guitar or piano, I think what I'll do is just change it to, let's see here. Run? Yes. Hold on. I'm going to switch it to... <clears throat> Uh, I think I'm going to switch it to harmonicas. Okay. Where's harmonica? Here we go. All right. So here's what I have. Harmonica blues. So here's the harmonica. Uh, the dogs in there, the flute, the violin, and this is what you get. So we're going to have harmonicas. Dogs, a flute, a little bit of an orchestra, a little bit of the farm, and then this is what we get. All right, take the screen off for a second. Now, when you do that, the introduction is now... <laughs> Now, what I'm going to do is save that onto a preset so I don't lose it. Memorize, we'll put D with a style, one with a style. All right. So this is what you normally get with what you just heard. That's the original. All right, now I'm going to put D1. This is what we created. Same thing with the introduction. And those dogs are actually singing at the right key. That's a fun way to play it if you really want to freak out your pets at home. <laughs> now, some th this is a little on the silly side. However, you can, by editing these styles, you can sometimes create some really pretty things. Sometimes editing them doesn't have to be just turning off or turning, making different sounds. But I have to tell you, sometimes I'll replace one sound with a similar sound so you know for example on that screen it had piano oh let me put back here sorry it had um piano guitar um sax section brass slide trombones so the secret to this is to starting off and having some fun with it is try to choose a sound that's very similar all right, so pull up the screen one more time, and I'm going to very quickly do this. So this time, instead of the, for the guitar and piano, I'm going to keep it on a guitar, but I'm going to change it to jazz guitar. And the sax section, I'm going to change it to a, maybe an, an alto sax. And the brass section, I'll change it to a trumpet, lead trumpet. And the slide trombones, I'll put, instead of slide trombones, I'll put uh, slide, uh, trombone slide NT. Okay? So, I'm using similar sounds. So, in the first one, instead of the guitar, what you see there, I have jazz guitar. Instead of the sax section, I have alto sax. Instead of uh, brass section, I have a trumpet lead sax alto trumpet lead and then on the third one instead of the slide trombones 
it says trombone slide and T. Now let me save this on D number two with a style. Okay, just so I, and this is what you get now. Very similar. Now, if you notice, it's still very similar sounding, but I altered them a little bit. Now, here's the cool thing. You notice I keep saving my work just in case. So remember, if you find something that you actually like, quickly save it. And um, the, the quick answer now is memorize, you pick a letter, you pick a number, and then most importantly on the screen, there's an option to save it with a style. You want to do that because we're editing the style. And then you confirm it with memorize. So what I'm going to have Sean, I'm going to ask Sean to do in the chat is put that, that those five steps. Memorize, letter, number, with a style, and then you confirm it by mem pressing memorize. Memorize, letter, number, with style, memorize. Memorize, letter, number, with a style, memorize. If you want to save presets, remember that, especially if you want to save the style and how you edited it, okay? So that's a, <clears throat> that's a kind of a clever way to just take something that's already good and then tweak it to something that you might like even differently. Now, here's an example. Uh, I featured this in a, in a workshop a while back. But I had to feature this in a way that catered to the smaller organs as well. So if you're here today on the SU class, because you have that model higher, you know, I played Ava Maria. And I have presets that I made for that. <coughs> and what I did, I'm not going to go into detail, but I will explain. I'm going to load in my presets. So I, what I did is I took a rhythm style called Soft Gospel which a lot of people know. Jerome loves the soft gospel style. Soft gospel is really cool because it works great for slow gospel tunes, but if you, if you alter the, the background, the Orchestra Plus, I've heard him use it with Beatles. He, uses, he plays Hey Jude with it. He'll actually turn off the Orchestra Plus and, and leave the genie on and put on a piano and it's perfect for Hey Jude. It's a great style to use for a lot of things. I use it for the song Ave Maria, but here's what soft gospel usually sounds like as it is in its original um, form. Pretty. And it's and and don't get me wrong, it's pretty just as it is. But you know, I could play. All right. So I'm going to touch here to edit style, and I'm going to read to you what I see. And I would encourage you to do this as well. So right now it says Genie has piano. It says Orchestra One has strings. Orchestra Two has acoustic guitar. Orchestra Three has Rhodes. Rhodes, by the way, is a, a certain type of a. Uh, piano, electric piano that came out, uh, I know it was in the early 70s for sure, I don't remember exactly when, and it was a totally different sound that was very commonly used amongst a lot of musicians. When I program my presets, let me take a picture of this so I can do this at the same time. When I program my presets, <coughs> what I did is I is that's a, I, Fender, that's a Fender Rhodes, by the way. Oh, look at that! Interesting. See, you got a little history lesson today. No extra charge, folks. No extra charge. We're nice people, aren't we? Now I'm going to text this picture to you, Sean. And if you're able to screen share, great. If not, I'll just read it. So right now I have the original says Genie has a piano. What I put was a piano electric classic. 
And then it says orchestra one strings, orchestra two acoustic guitar. I actually turned those off. And then orchestra three, Rhodes, and I kept Rhodes here. So instead of this, okay, what you're going to get is this. All right, so that's the original, folks. Wow, you're that's I Sean Maloney. That. He is. Uh... And w which one did you switch? Wait, I'm gonna. Oh, you're gonna type it up there? Okay. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Actually, you're right. Send another picture. That's even better. I'm gonna send another picture. <laughs> wow. He just takes it, and it's amazing. I just sent that over 200, 110 miles. It went over there 110 miles. Someday you're going to be able to travel that way. Blink your eye and you'll be in somewhere else. Thanks. I just hope like your arm doesn't get left behind or something. Okay, so when you have, are you able to screenshot both of those at the same time? Uh, Maybe. You're, you're asking too much. Now. Okay, all right. <clears throat> anyway, so what you saw was there. This is what I changed it to. And then here we go. So what happens is you get this really pretty background there. So that's what I changed it to. So the first one was originally think just a piano. And then the rest of them were on. I turned it off. And so here we go. And then what happens is I play, I added, oh, we got the music. Oh, maybe I can look up there and read it. It's a little hard to read. <laughs> so what I did is I, I turned on the orchestra one as I played, and it's a great way to just build an arrangement. Now I have a couple things I'm gonna touch on before we're done on that. So um, I'll stop right there. Actually, what I'll do is I'll play this, uh, I'll play this all the way through um, so you could hear it uh, and then, here we go.
Okay, so anyway, that was the whole arrangement. But in the beginning, if you noticed, I had a lot of that stuff off, and I just added things by editing the style. <coughs> okay? Rhodes is an instrument, not a song. Wonder why you put that up there. Someone well, somebody might. put a question. What is Rhodes? Oh. Oh, okay. Not in Rhodes, my song list, so I Rhodes, said it's not a song. Rhodes is a musical instrument, kind of uh, like a, a well, guitar, I guess, right? Or is that oh, the brand? Fender. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a Fender Rhodes, okay. but they can't say Fender, I don't think, in the Lowry, so they just call it the Rhodes. Ah, Lowry's always working around that. <laughs> anyway, uh, before I got a couple announcements, maybe do a quick number if I have some time here. Uh, questions, 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 questions. Yes, you do have a Rhodes on your marquee. <clears throat> yeah, but in keep in mind, that. keep this in mind, folks. A lot of time these sounds are found in the style when you touch your edit style. And I will tell you, if you go and you poke around, you're going to find something kind of interesting. A lot of times when Bill Curry programmed that style, he programmed the sound in that background. If you touch it, like if I put on soft gospel in the, like I said originally, if I touch Rhodes and I scroll down one and then I scroll back up, it goes away. Okay. There's a lot of sounds that are in, in, especially in that bottom one, that he programs that's necessary for that. That's not part of your genius list or your sound list, but it's part of that band, that style. And if you touch it and you move it, like right now I did that, and it, it won't come back. Now, if I turn off the style and turn it back on, there it is. It's back again. Now, I'm going to turn Genie, Strings, Acoustic Guitar off, everything off but the Rhodes, and this is what you get. Hear it? It's an electric piano, okay? So just remember that. So yeah, if you, if you want that sound, because I know some people are asking me too about that sound that he's talking about, Rhodes, it's not, like you said, it's not necessarily called that in here. A lot of these sounds right here, these electric piano ones, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of small, but it's in the sound lists in the back of your yes, manuals. Sure. All these electric keyboard ones will sound a lot like that, particularly uh, these ones are kind of the more, more that style. I hope you're writing that down, folks. Leave that <laughs> screen right there. He just gave you a wealth of knowledge right there. This one's my favorite, the Whirly one. They, and that's, I think, based on Wurlitzer, so they can't say that, but they call it Whirly. And if you want that sound, how do you get it, folks? You dial the number and you hit Genius Sound, like we did earlier. All right. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So you really edit style and you went to the Genie. And then you change, okay, to change the piano, you scroll. You touch, you, you touch the sound that you want to change. It'll turn blue. Right. Okay. And, and, then, yeah, and then how do you get to the numbers? Well, in this case, you don't use the numbers. This one, you have to scroll. Okay. Okay. I was confused. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For, for this, you have to scroll. But if, scroll. You wanna, if you want that eventual sound for your melody. Yeah. Then, then you use the numbers. Then you can use the number and put it in the sound. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, folks, today um, we talked about. I talked about this in an EX class on a on a few occasions, um, and um, and this is a this is a feature that doesn't commonly get used, and. And I'm going to encourage you to go out and poke buttons because remember, if you goof around with it and you don't like what you came up with, you turn off the rhythm style and turn it back on, it'll default back to its original setting. So you, you, you can't mess it up. You could only find something you may like. <clears throat> and if you like it, save it on a preset. Now, 
If you have any questions with this, there's 48 of you on here today, and there's just one of me. But we have 12 personal assistants at Fletcher Music Centers. So if you don't know your personal assistants, let me know, and I'll get someone to you. Now, I do have some people that ask me, and I respond, and I tell them, and then they never, and then they, uh, the PA can't get in touch with them. So if they try to call you, it's because I'm saying call them. They need help. Um, so get with your personal assistants on this because this is a really neat tool to use on the instrument to alter the band. And you're going to find that you may not come up with a lot of great settings, but that one setting that you come up with is great, is worth keeping. And then there's nothing worse than trying to remember what you did if after you lose it. And you go, oh, how do I get that sound? And then saving your preset. If you do not know how to save a preset on your instrument, that would be like the first priority. Call your personal assistant and say, how do I do this? Okay. Hopefully in the chat I gave you the, the basic. Memorize, letter, number, with a style is good because if you're using a rhythm, if you're not using a rhythm, you don't need to. And then um, you confirm it with the memorize. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, I, if you noticed um, on the screen for Ava Maria, we need to pull that up real quick. You know, I know many of you have seen this before. Some of you have seen it from other um, we have uh, other people that are affiliated with us. They teach a lot of classes. They, they use this kind of concept. Some of our PAs even give their students. Those A1s, 2s, those, those represent presets that I made for me. Every, every staff member kind of does their own setups. Um, and basically, when I played the song, all I had to do is push the preset because it was already programmed. So what, what I've had, I've had a lot of people ask this because I know there's some other people out there in the industry doing that. So for Fletcher Music Center, starting in March, what I'm going to do is a uh, song of the month, all right? And especially if you have an A series and an E series and, of course, SU, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take a song and in detail take that song and show you all the little features I did to arrange that song. Like here, I only showed you one piece to the pie. You know, I turned off two things, change it to a piano, and then I built this arrangement around it. So what I'm going to do is monthly is I'm going to take a song and show you how we did the arrangement. And what I'm going to do for starters is I'm going to take one or two that I already have maybe. I don't know. I might change that. Just pick a totally new song altogether, create a whole new arrangement for you. And, and then what I'm going to do is we're going to teach you, because uh, some of those are going to be available uh uh, to you either through email in some cases on our patreon site and we're going to teach you how you can acquire those setups when we have them available and how to download and put them in because we i put some up on our patreon site and some people are at, they get it downloaded but then they don't know what to do after that so i'm going to start teaching that and we're going to do that monthly um, so stay on the lookout for our, our emails uh, and uh, I'll announce that, and I'm going to have a class in March sometime, and I'm just going to call it something really fancy, a song of the month <laughs> arrangement, okay? Nothing too fancy. So when you see that, just remember, and it's anybody can come, but I'm going to really be working on all the, on the touchscreen model type instruments. Um, speaking of weekly emails, uh, Sean, do you have a copy of the last week's email by chance? So last week, you'll notice I put this big thing at the top. <clears throat> You're going to find, starting in March, um, that I'm going to try to to make it to where I put everything going on for the week in one email. So uh, again, next week I'm going to do it again. You'll have you'll see that little note at the top, and he's got multiple squares he's putting there. <laughs> I just love making shapes on He loves rectangles for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and what it's going to have is, is it's twofold. Don't delete this email because everything that you see in this email will be on the website. And I'm working on revising the virtual classes calendars a little bit to make it easier to find. But I'm not going to uh, – I'll 
I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing yet because it's still a work in progress. But everything that's happening that week is going to be in that weekly email. The product feature classes, if we have one that week. The variety class, if we have one that week. Um, so th in this one here, we had special workshops for those people. The SU one was there. Um, the Conductor Magic, the previously recorded classes. I always like to throw in a few just in case. And then, of course, a reminder of the classes that Don, Joni, and Carrie are teaching. So those are all there. And if you notice, go ahead and pause. You'll, say, you'll see it has a spot there where you can click on any one of those. So if you click one, it'll bring you right to where those links are for those classes. Okay? So that's why I say save the email. So maybe next week, just kind of get in the habit a little bit of trying to rely on the weekly email because on um, starting on uh, March 1st, not next week, the following week, I'm just going to put everything in one. But rest assured, we got a lot of great things in store for you. So stay tuned in. Stay tuned in on the email. And last but not least, <clears throat> I am going to post uh, today's class, the uh, Ava Maria. I've done it before. I'll do it again. Um, I want to post the this class. It's probably not going to be posted until tomorrow on our Patreon site, but it will be there, and I'm going to put the presets for that there. Okay? Um, so if you want the setups that you heard today from 1 through 7, and our Patreon site, we got, uh, I think we're up to 101 members. Our goal is to be up to 1,000 by the end of the, the February. So if you're not a Patreon, sign up. <laughs> And uh, tell your friends, sign up, because what we have on Patreon is two things. We are, I'm putting every recorded class, with the exception of Carrie's classes for now, I'm saving that, okay? Um, and look, at we have 101 members, and you'll see that from time to time, there are some items that are viewable. So Don's View Zoom Musical, you can watch that if it says... Unlock this post, you have to become a member, and then you can just click on that, and you can become a member. You can see things like Sean looking off to the distance. No, that's actually a great video, <clears throat> and it defaults to a, an option of how you want to contribute. So some things are available uh, that's available to the public, and some are for Patreon members only. Uh, Sean did a, a video, he did a, I, would, I wouldn't say a video, a whole production, <laughs> if you will, um, where he put it for Patreon members, and I can't tell you how many people responded, how great it was. The first two minutes were hilarious, just the way he, he, he put it together. Um, but I'm going to post this, this one will be tomorrow. So what I've been doing is I've been posting two a day at 5 o'clock Mountain Time um, every day. And so some are available to the public and some are. And sometimes we, and then the other thing is we have bonus content, things that are not taught on these classes. So um, you may have a special instructional video just put together for Patreon members, et cetera. Okay. So with that said, I think what I'll do is close off with a number. Um, and I'm going to play something upbeat here. And so I am looking for, where is my style that I'm looking for? I know it's in here somewhere. I should, oh, use the style list. <coughs> and I have them all alphabetically. <coughs> so are any questions before I adjourn as I'm selecting my rhythm styles? Any questions? Hands up? None whatsoever. Unmute yourself and speak your mind. I don't think you want to ask him to do that. Okay. <laughs> now, I take that back. I retract. Oh, it's not in here. So I'll have to select another style. Of course it's not. Okay. So I'm going to pick uh, Vegas Big Band here. And I'm going to have a little fun with this number here. I'm going to bring out Gene Krupa and Buddy Rich and we'll have a little fun with this number. I want to thank you all for joining me today. We hope you enjoyed the class. 
I'll close off with a, a Vegas big band style, but um, it's going to have a little fun with here. I'm going to do a couple of numbers here. Here we go. Okay, so I've got Vegas Big Man on. Might as well tell you what I'm doing. I hit rhythm preset six, and it automatically puts on the drum variation, okay? And all I did is I hit the fill. So the fill gives me Gene Grupa. drum variation off, you get Buddy Rich. much folks we hope you enjoyed the class today anybody know what the songs i played there at the end there one of them was from jungle book <laughs> that's right want to be like you who walk like you talk like you the first one was sing sing sing, 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 right. sing yeah. yes well thank you so much folks we thank you for everything you do we thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you we hope you enjoyed the class today and uh, we'll see you real soon on our next zoom all righty so uh, stay safe, keep playing music, and mwah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.